We are Ann Arbor's talk station, 1290 WLBY. Designs on Michigan with the Bentley Historical Library, our mini-series on Damien on Design. Damien Farrell, local architect with Damien Farrell Design Group. Good morning to you. Good morning. It's good and to be back. The two Nancys are back. <laughs> <laughs> From the Bentley Historical Library at the University of Michigan, as we welcome in Nancy Bartlett, who is an associate director. Good to have you back. Thank you. And Nancy Duramedy, who also an associate uh, director at the Bentley, and part of a group called A2 Modern. Today we're going to explore the modernism movement here in the state of Michigan when it comes to architecture and its importance. And I think we appreciate it more now, perhaps, than people did even a few years ago. How did your group A2 Modern form? Uh, it really formed by meeting some neighbors. Well, first of all, I, my husband and I did purchase a modern home in 2005. Okay. And... Um, Who was it designed by? Nancy? George Brigham. Okay, all right. So, at that point, I was familiar with George Brigham um, mainly through Nancy Bartlett, actually, um, because she's really been the advocate for modern architecture. Mm -hmm. And so I've learned a lot from her. Mm -hmm. And we, um, the house needed quite a bit of work. There was a huge uh, addition put out front. Mm -hmm. So on Sunday when we went to the open house, my husband and I, he oh, didn't really want to go in. He said, no way. This looks really different. I'm not going in. The next day, I went to the archive and looked at what the house, the original intention mm -hmm. of the house was yeah. by George and was just amazed. Gorgeous photographs are in the collection and drawings. And so I really saw a lot of possibilities, yeah. probably unfortunately for us. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> but really, it really is striking to use the archives. I think it's really important um, that more people know about our collections, homeowners. Yeah. And so um, after a few years and more uh, neighbors I talked to, um, we kind of just formed a casual uh, group to start with. Did you end up doing some major work to the house after you got it there? We did. Okay. We um, reconnected through, uh, Nancy actually introduced me to Bob Metcalf, Robert yeah. Metcalf, yeah. and he was still in his office over on... Oh, gosh, I know exactly where it is. Yes, I, I can't think right. of the name, Medford. On Medford, yes. So uh, Nancy and I had been over there a few months earlier talking to him about his collection. And so I, I had met him, and then I decided, okay, I'll write him a letter mm -hmm. and see if he'd be interested. And he said he'd worked for George as apprentice from 1948 to 1952. He wrote me back, and he said, oh, yeah, I think George would really like that, because he'd been driving by and saw this terrible addition. Okay. And so m met us at the house, and that's where my interest, I'd say, there was a lot that came out of that mm -hmm. as far as, talks about the clients and stories shared and um, I realize it's really a fascinating history and as Nancy knows with her she was an, she was a friend of William Muschenheim mm -hmm. I mean, it's a whole different kind of lifestyle you're talking about yeah. modern living yeah. Um, but I think it's really fascinating. I'm looking at a picture of your house online. I quickly looked it up on the assessor here. <laughs> so where where was the addition? Was it, uh, it was, on the um, right-hand side? The west. Oh, it jutted about 14 feet out really? from the garage. We have historic districts here in Ann Arbor, mm -hmm. as many communities do. Nancy Bartlett, when you um, look at the modernism movement, are, they're not considered part of what a traditional historic district is that would prevent something like that from happening. Well, that's true. In many, many people's minds, they're not historical enough. And yet they do, they are, I think, they have a historical moment by now. Yeah. And they also have their own needs. Uh, modern buildings are, 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 of course, made of materials that do um, become compromised over time, just like any other kind of um, uh, construction. And so there, there's a bit of fragility to them in that people have certain assumptions. Well, if they're modern, then they don't have the same kind of preservation needs as those beautiful homes from the turn of the century. Mm -hmm. um, but in fact, we do find uh, many uh, homeowners coming into the archive to discover what was the original intention of this building, how mm -hmm. has it been changed over time, what are the specifications, what can I learn about the materials that were used. Um, yeah. 
And unless you happen to have the original drawings in the house, that sometimes that does happen. Mm -hmm. And even then, it's hard to understand mm -hmm. exactly what the intent was for something. But the Bentley, then, is serving as a place that these homeowners are going to now right. to yeah. get this information. That's right. It's kind of a historical house. <laughs> when, when did you first see that starting to happen? Well, uh, as I mentioned before, I've been at the Bentley since 1985. <laughs> I've seen it happening ever since. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's that's. Because the big burning question for me, obviously there's a, I understand this resurgence of interest in the modern movement among people who know about it, so architects, designers, people like yourselves, but the, there's this incredible research, or not research, but surge of interest by the general public in modernism. And you see so particularly things like uh, prefab companies that are advertising, all of their work now across the board has a very powerful modern aesthetic. What do, you, what do you think it is that's grabbing the general public now about modernism? Do you have any ideas on that? What, is it the simplicity, the cleanliness of it? I don't know, but certainly shelter magazines and, uh, you know, well, 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 well magazine, well magazine right. and yes. design within reach. Yeah. I mean, and, the, and again, the Michigan sort of home for a lot of that design, Herman Miller, Steel yes, case. Exactly. The, the 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 alumni of Cranbrook oh, Academy. Right. Um, there there's a real legitimate claim to uh, the, the 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 ownership of that, if you will, by the state of Michigan is incredibly yeah. important. And and I think those who have tapped into that take extra pride if, if they if yeah. they furnish their homes or their businesses mm -hmm. with Michigan designed modernism, mm -hmm. then they've really tapped into something. There certainly yeah. seems to be a new appreciation, though, as uh, oh, Damien alluded absolutely. to, for this. And that's mm -hmm. why I was wondering if you had seen an uptick and uh, archival uh, interest of these things. Uh, if you go to a2modern.org, your group, Nancy Dramedy, actually has a beautiful website that gives Thanks. stunning examples of uh, this kind mm -hmm. of, of work. A, the number two, modern.org. And the goal of your group, just to keep this... Uh, yeah, I'd say it's it's, the goal is definitely to raise awareness and appreciation of modern design and architecture in some t ways, I think we're an architectural history group because what we're trying to do is share the awareness of, of the legacy and the history here in Ann Arbor. Um, sure, we really like to preserve and we are not pushing ourselves as a, pres a historic preservation group, but that's underlying what we're doing. Mm. We don't want to see teardowns, although they are happening. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's tough, though, because of the economics of what's happened. If you have a, a large piece of property in Ann Arbor Hills, mm -hmm. most of the lots are half acre or mm -hmm. more, and you have a lot of times a more, in the modern period, homes were 1,700 to 2,100 square feet, and for some people that doesn't suit them today, so it's, it's desirable for them to tear the house down and build, uh, build something new. Yeah. So I think the more that they understand about the legacy um, of what's available in Ann Arbor, why, who designed it, um, the connection with the University of Michigan I think is really important. Um, I'm hoping that that education uh, deters teardowns. Yeah. And you know it's happening in, in cities across the United mm -hmm. States. Mm -hmm. And do we, do we are there other cities in Michigan like Grand Rapids, for instance? Do they have a collection of these kinds of homes that like we have in Ann Arbor? Is anything else that equals it? Or? The, from what I've, um, there is some homes okay. there, but I've heard through the state um, historic preservation mm -hmm. office that we have the largest concentration. Okay. Yeah, there's some in Bluefield Hills, Manure, Yamasaki, Dinah right. Line, quite a bit there. There's some um, in Kalamazoo, too, actually. Kalamazoo um, has... Architects like Norm Carver. Yes. Um, who worked Frankly there, Wright. Frank Wright collection yeah. in Kalamazoo. Yeah, so there... In fact, the, there is a larger umbrella grant project now, michiganmodern.org, uh, that has a database where they've identified mm -hmm. uh, many. So you can go to different cities and see... Yeah. Alden Dow's another one in Midland yeah. that's got a large concentration. I'd say that's probably the, the next largest. Isn't it funny something, and the modern movement grew up when? What was the era? 1950s? Mm, I'd say it started earlier. 40s? 
30s. Really? Okay. Yeah. So something back then that must have looked so futuristic still to this day appears modern. Mm -hmm. All yeah. these years later. Isn't that incredible mm -hmm. when you think about yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, it, it just the vision that the architects had in this. Uh, Power Center is considered a modern mm -hmm. uh, yes. building as well? It's brutalist yeah. modern. Yes. Somewhat. <laughs> but still very modern. Yeah. 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 So yes. just to give people an idea of what we're talking about. And how would you describe a, a modern type of structure? To me, I think of it's kind of box-like, but... It can be boxy. It's usually, at least for residential, I think most examples are um, horizontally yeah. situated to the site. Um, materials could range from concrete to concrete, you know, concrete block to there was a lot of cedar, cedar used here in Ann Arbor by, like, Brigham, Metcalf. Mm -hmm. um, and very, very simple... Simple planes as well. It's yes, very the, the windows tend to be large um, surfaces of glass as opposed to just punched openings like you would see in traditional mm -hmm. architecture. Yeah. So you, you interchange glass and solid wall. Um, you know, um, make a, a void and and solid. And, and the, the elevations tend to be a composition of solid and void as well, not just windows placed at an elevation. You know, as in punched openings. So you kind of interchange. Um, depending on how you want to express the architecture on the exterior surface. The roofs tend to be very simple, either flat or just a mono pitch, a single mm -hmm. pitch, but I think they're characterized by tremendous light, mm -hmm. gorgeous light quality, which is wonderful here in Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And especially on mature sites where the trees can shelter those glass surfaces in the summertime. Yeah. Uh, but simplicity, right? A simplicity of living, mm -hmm. um, an elegance of design, um, a celebration of design in the furniture. And with the renewed interest in it now, to think that if the Bentley didn't have these archival pieces to go along with this, it would be very hard for people to understand how important Ann Arbor, mm -hmm. University of Michigan, Michigan as a state, yeah. played in this whole movement. Yeah. Right, Nancy? Yeah, and I would say, too, that uh, another way to try to understand your question of what, what is modernism, what does it look like, take a drive or a bicycle ride or a walk through some of the wonderful neighborhoods. They have a high concentration of them. Along Heatherway or Arlington, mm -hmm. for example, you'll see it in front of you. You'll see modernism. Mm -hmm. 1251 Heatherway uh, by William Muschenheim is one of my favorite modern residential buildings in Ann Arbor. And we have the drawings that show his original color palette. And exactly that's the one that his, steps down the site, right? That's it's right. A, it's on a, several levels. Exactly. Right. It's a, it's a small roof. building yeah. with a fairly complicated composition, but it all comes together. Yeah. As, a, as a beautiful example of modernism yeah. in Michigan. And for many of us, we drive by all of the time, and now we know the history of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great talking with both of you today on Damien Farrell's Damien on Design on the Lucy Ann Land Show. Uh, Nancy Bartlett and Nancy Duramity, they are associate directors at our wonderful Bentley Historical Library at the University of Michigan, which is a treasure trove of great archival items and a lot of architectural ones as well. Mm -hmm. Great talking. Good design stuff. Thank you both very much. Oh, thank, thank you very much. You know,